Okay, uh, we are recording now. And we will flip to the first item on the agenda. But uh, because I'm using a Windows machine now, it's not okay. That's a little bit different for me. Okay, all right. Okay, um, <clears throat> I was mentioning that there were a couple of action items or discussions that happened during ITF 114 and and the minutes. Uh, you know, we have uh, we have published uh, a rough draft for the minutes. Uh, couple of items that came out were the user defined or private use actions. Uh, um, we wanted to make sure they're documented or they're described at least the requirements for them. And we talked about, I, I think Loa asked the question, should it be a range uh, of actions? You know, a range of, uh, if we're talking about a, a set of numbers or flags or whatever it is, so it's a range that we want to set aside for private use. Um, maybe this is more of a solution description rather than a requirement, but at, it was mentioned and it's an uh, action item I took down. Um, I'm happy to, to update this if anyone wants to add uh, on how do we want to tackle that. Um, for example, is it captured in the requirements draft? Yes. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I should have put my hand up. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, Go ahead. Yes. It, yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, in in that there is a requirement that says, I think, uh, going from memory, that that states that solutions may um, may allow private uh, or words to the effect of solutions may may um, define. Um, a range for um, private uh, private use, um, and if they if they do, it needs to be properly, essentially properly registered with IANA. So, so when you define a registry for the for the action indicators, for example, um, you you need to obviously structure it and and reserve a certain range of them for for private use if a solution allows private use. Not sure it really. So, to be honest, though, I'm not. I think this came out of the discussion that we've had in in these meetings, um, where where I think people expressed that that it wasn't clear that that the requirements document allowed private um, uh, private code points, but but that was not really the intention. But I'm not. Um, it was raised in the in the design meet, meeting as well. Sorry, in the ITF one one fourteen. Yeah, yes, it was. Yeah, well, but prior to that, um, so we we, we mentioned in ITF one fourteen because we'd addressed it in the newest version of the requirements draft. But but there was a discussion um, in in the Open DT meeting um, about. Um, about private um, private use and um, an action on us to try and address this because it wasn't clear in, to to some folks in that the, the framework actually even allowed it. Well, not the framework, the the requirements dot draft even allowed it. Um, Sorry to interrupt, Matthew. I can't see it in the document. I um, for, I just look for private. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yes, it should be in there. Uh, just let me have in the draft. You're talking about the latest version. Version I two. I just got. I got the version. Oh, version two. Hang on a second. Maybe I'm on the wrong version. I'm on version two. I'm on version two on the data tracker, and I searched for private. But I mean, I think think you, you, we can stop the discussion by uh, guaranteeing that we will put it in there if it's not in there already. <clears throat> I didn't. I don't see the word private in there. Is it uh, user defined that uh, we use? Oh, yeah, yeah. User, user defined is the term we use. So, oh, so what okay. we said 
was that an MPLS network action specification may support user-defined network actions. If it does, its IANA process must include provisions for user-defined network actions. You're right. Sorry. Yes. Now I found it. Okay. Uh, any action item that we want uh, to take down on this, or uh, you yeah, we have to do is to note that it's requirement nineteen, requirement nineteen, section three point three. Is it nineteen? Yeah, requirement nineteen, section three point three. Okay. Okay. I missed, I missed the discussion. Um, I think I caught the tail end of it, uh, where we're saying that a range needs to be set aside. Yeah, um, I think the idea is that uh, rather, you know, if, if we're thinking of standardizing a set of actions, then you want to leave a, a room for user defined rather than one it's a range so so requirements deals with it without without saying any of that it just says it must exist the the thing that i would say is that if it comes from a different space um then you wouldn't need to set aside anything uh, it depends on how you do it so in exactly. the F, in the fai document for example there are bits that are standard action and there's separate bits that are, um, or bits that are uh, ISD and there are separate bits that are what we call um, user-defined ISD. So it's not like there's any, you know, any overlap or potential for confusion. If you're instead using code points, then you either say there are two separate spaces um, or as you said, you might have to actually, uh, you know, take a range and say this is a range for private or uh, user def defined. But I think that depends on the solution. Yeah, the the requirements document is just just says there must be provisions. Yeah, it does say IANA. I can imagine we could do it without IANA. Maybe we should say it must. I'll specify how it's done or something or other. Yeah. Maybe we should look at the second half of that because it may not be an IANA process. It might be an RSC process. Well, if it's an RF... No, but I, if you can... Kariti it, it, it be... had an RFC process, essentially, didn't he? By saying in his in his document... The following bits are for user allocate are, are user defined. Right. Right. So that wouldn't be an IANA process. But you'd want those bits not to be trumped over by IANA at some point. Right. So I think maybe we just need to revisit that language slightly because you could do it through an RFC. Okay. I mean, I mean, all with all, I think all the the implication is in the requirements document is that if if you define a registry. Then and you want some exactly. some of the some of those code points to be used for user defined. Then yep. you just reserve that range as, and tag it as user defined or whatever yes. the terminology is in IANA, so that then IANA doesn't go and allocate okay. any of those code points to um, anything yeah. else. It's all. Um, I don't like. I don't know if there's a case though where you could have. Um, a range that is allocated by another body, for example, or or, or, or an RFC, another, or another RFC, or yeah, yeah I guess. Should, 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 should we should, should the action be for us to go and look at requirement nineteen and see if we can tweak the words to cover all possible cases, but but nonetheless have the sentiment that um, you, you you must do it and you must do it in a way that doesn't trump on anyone else. I think the main thing is that um, it should. It should not trample on anything else, but yeah. um, by by the nature of being user defined, you just want it to be, you know, you want it to be there, and you want it. You know, nobody should 
trample on it and it shouldn't trample on anything right. else. But you shouldn't define what it is because it's usually exactly. Exactly. We already say, I think we're already saying all those things. I think it would probably, I think I can suggest some words for 19, but probably don't need the whole call to, to do that. Okay. Sure. Okay. I'll uh, move on to the next one. Uh, but before that, I did note down uh, that we have possible options uh, for either IANA managed uh, range or RFC specified. Um, maybe we can revisit this next time we meet to see how we want to address that. Uh, the next item I sifted out from the minutes was, uh, we identified competing proposals and we encouraged, um, to, at least the, the uh, design team, uh, working, uh, and the working group chairs encouraged, uh, uh the authors of the documents to align and converge, but uh, there is, uh, there might be um, reasons not to converge and uh, the competing proposals will have to be evaluated against some metrics. At least uh, Kiriti talked about, you know, um, evaluation of metrics uh, after implementation and, and so on. So that's an action item uh, I took out. Uh, uh, we we do, I guess, want to follow up on that. It'll take a little while, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> and anyone else wants to add on to that? I, I see Matthew raised his hand. Just, yeah. just, just on that evaluation, evaluation against metrics, I, um, I don't know if it's helpful, but there was a, a there's a draft that was in the NVO three working group compare, which which described the uh, the process that the design team went through to evaluate different encapsulations, um, which we've kind of kept alive and and probably will publish as, as an RFC just for community information. Um, because there was so you know there were years there was years of uh, wrangling in NVO three to be honest and debate in NVO three over different encapsulations so it's it's might be worth going and looking at some of the precedent for how working groups have come to um, come to a decision over this in the past. Okay, I noted that down. If you can provide a link to that draft or, but I did note down that uh, NVO three working group had similar. Uh, investigation done. Yeah, I'll, I'll post it to the chat. Okay. All right. Um, and the next, uh, I don't see anyone raising their hand, so I'll go on. Uh, the next uh, action item I took is, should we order the actions in, or the M&A actions uh, within ISD, within PSD, or in between ISD and PSD? There was a discussion on this, and uh, I think there were multiple opinions on that. So we might want to revisit this. Anyone wants to add? Uh, I think it might be worth looking at what uh, IPv6 did for their, um, what do they call it, extension headers. Um, there's, you know, if you say, Whatever is earlier is more, you know, higher priority than there's a land grab that, you know, people try to put theirs in front. Uh, but yeah, it sounds nice. I'm not sure it's practical, but definitely worth having the discussion. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. And let's move on. Uh, let me check just to confirm if anyone is, I am raising my hand. Okay. I don't know if it's showing as raising in my hand or not. Um, 
Okay, uh, the next action item we want to uh, update today is, um, uh, actually it's on the agenda, so I'll skip it and then give the chance for the authors to report. I'll jump right to the third one, which is on the um, first nibble draft. And the last time we updated, um, um, just to capture the last uh, two updates, Kiriti was to revisit the previous discussion on first nibble and update on whether further action is required. And then last time we met, I think Stewart updated that there are no issues. And to conclude, I also checked the draft. I, I think you published a revision two on that. And um, uh, so is is the revision two capturing all the requirements, Kuriti? Can you... Um, Elaborate. Yeah, I believe so. Um, I think there was um, an open discussion on, um, you know, should we do things in the control plane or data plane or both? And uh, Stuart made a comment about belt and suspenders. Um, so I think that's still open, perhaps. Um, but other than that, I think we're close. So when you say should we do it in the control mean meaning like uh, we don't need the first nibble to be set. So, um, I think it was specifically about. Um, not the control, not, not the 1st nibble, but uh, the PSD stuff. So, do we want uh, PSD to be in the control plane or data plane? Uh, Yeah, so if, if you talk about a uh, control word signaling, um, today the control word signaling is in the control plane. Uh, if you talk about beer, uh, it's in the data plane and control plane. And so there was that discussion that um, should we have control plane signaling of the, you know, the presence of uh, PSD, should we have data plane signaling or both? And like I said, in some cases we have both. In some case, cases we only have control plane, uh, like in to the wires. Okay, but with regards to this draft, uh, Kiriti, uh, specifically the first nibble draft, um, I think because we are uh, the action item is on it, so. Um, yeah, I want to so put down one... the progress on it. So, what is it that's holding back? Um, just that um, in in the draft it says, um, you know, the the first nibble could also be used to signal. In fact, in a way, it's used to signal uh, the data plane uh, presence and uh, and type of PSD. And um, I think that's where Stuart was maybe questioning, and I mean, Stuart is here, so he can speak for himself, but uh, questioning whether we do need that. Uh, you know, the fact is that when the, uh, the data plane says zero, zero, um, you expect that there's a control word, but the control word format is determined by the control plane, it's not determined by the data plane. The, the zero, zero uh, value is used by both uh, pseudowire and DetNet that have different formats for the control word. Uh, for beer, on the other hand, you have a data plane signaling, uh, that you have a beer label saying that there's a beer header. Um, you have a special nibble, which is five or whatever it is, and you have a control plane signaling. So I think the philosophy of, you know, the use of the control of, of the first nibble, uh, I think is, is a question. So, Kiriti, um, just to reiterate the question is, should the MPLS payload type be signaled in control plane? No, Can PSD type, PSD type, not payload type. PSD type, well, it is MPLS payload, right? Okay. Um, I, I know it's a 
it's um, religion re religion there but no, uh, no, but no. more interestingly i want to uh, highlight that today we can have an lsp and it can carry multiple types right that, for example the same lsp can carry uh um v4 and v6 traffic so wh why uh why and then signaling the control plane will not help right no, no, no. Uh, it's not payload type. It's PSD type. PSD type. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. you could have a PSD that says, I have a control word. You could have a PSD that says, I have a beer header here or beer, you know, whatever, beer thingy. Uh, you could, uh, so you, the PSD, if you, if you generalize the term PSD to include what we already have defined, um, the first label says five for uh, beer header. It says zero for pseudo wire control words, as well as detnet control words. Um, so the question is, should we extend that? Um, and the answer is to be determined. I'm not talking about the payload, whether I have an ethernet packet or an IPv4, or IPv6 packet, that's payload for me. Right. But the, the draft is about uh, the first nibble, right? Uh, generically, not about MNA PSD. Well, it is about MNA PSD because the first nibble, if it is not four mm -hmm. or six, uh, can tell you what is the PSD type. So are we saying the first that nibble, the first nibble yeah. of zero, uh, you know, four bits of zero? Um, says it's a control word. It doesn't say which type though. The first nibble of five says it's a uh, it's beer. Uh, first nibble, I don't know if we, we have another one. I think two, one or two um, has another meaning. So the first nibble is used for two different things. It is used to separate IPv4, IPv6 from other things. Uh, and it's used uh, to indicate the type of control word or whatever. Stuart, do you want to jump in? Um, so, uh, I was going to jump in much earlier on, but um... So there's a whole, for example, zero is a whole series of, of, of possible control words. So consider why it doesn't have just one. It has a whole multiplicity of different types. Um, no, I, I don't think I have anything to add. I, I've lost the thread. Yeah, okay. I also kind of got confused. So okay. I so honestly, let, me, yeah. let me try to restate this. There is a need for a first nibble. Um, and the original need for the first nibble was to say, this is not an IPv4 packet because people were doing these bad heuristics of saying, oh, if it's a four, I'm gonna pretend, um, I'm gonna make like it's an IPv4 packet and then do load balancing. And if it's a six, I'll you know, make like it's an IPv6 packet and do load balancing. So we said, we're gonna put a first nibble that is different from four and six. Um, and initially we said, we'll just put zero, right? Uh, it doesn't matter. And that was the original use of this, and uh, it was for the control word. Um, and we went on from that to say, okay, we can have zero to be a control word. There's a difference between that net and, and pseudo wire, but it's still a control word. There's one or two, which is for OAM uh, or something else to do with pseudo wire. And then there's five that is for beer. So. We can take that further and say there's, you know, seven means that there's a second MPLS stack and eight means there's, you know, I don't know, some other types of PSD. In fact, um, if you take uh, how you use header of headers for the, for the uh, PSD, you can say there's a set of values here for that. Um, and so the first word, uh, the first nibble would say, I'm, you know, such and such PSD, and the rest of it would say, here's the length of the overall PSD and so on. So the header of headers that how you has can be incorporated into this. That was the discussion and we haven't gotten very far on that. Uh, 
clearly, you know, we need that discussion because it seems to have bubbled out of people's minds what the IEPR does to people. So, uh, one to clarify the control plane angle to it. Um, so today, the the zero or the four, sorry, the zero or the four, the six, they're not signaled in any routing protocol or control plane. Um, uh, the zero is the, you have to signal whether or not you, you're using a control word in your pseudo wire signaling. You have to signal in your detnet signaling whether or not uh, you're using a uh, control word. Uh, maybe it's mandatory for detnet, but it is in the signaling. The four and the six are not, and I'm not talking. That's why I'm not. I'm saying this is not about payload. This is about PSD type. If you in, if you generalize PSD to include control words, beer headers, and other things. I, I agree. The control word needs to be uh, you know known to the egress or to pop it. Yes. Um, but. Yeah, for four and six, that's the the, the mind-boggling thing is, uh, it's you can uh, ena enable. It. I mean, PSD data can be carried by some packets and not by other packets. So then, how can we signal it? Right? So, so there are two things. Um, one is you can signal it in the FAI or or the equivalent of the FAI saying. Um, Today, uh, you know, the FAI draft went back and forth between signaling hop by hop uh, PSD uh, and end to end PSD, but then eventually we went to just hop by hop. So, uh, so again, you can put something in the MNA header saying there is PSD. And so when you're done with the label stack, be ready to process PSD. And then when you get to the PSD, you can then say, oh, there's a nibble here that tells me what is the type of PSD. So this is all in the control in the data plane. You can say, no, there's none of that. It's all in the control plane. And the control plane signaling will tell you what is going on. Which, uh, by the way, for beer, there is a beer label that tells you that there is a coming coming up, there's a beer header. So so we have both, and I think it would be good for us uh, as we're designing, you know, the next generation of MPLS uh, to decide whether we want control plane signaling, data plane signaling, or both for, you know, um, for PSD. Did that make it clear? Okay. Um, yeah, I got it that you have some action, uh, some work to be done. Um, so There's definitely a discussion to be had and pros and cons to be laid out there and then a decision to be made. Um, whether it belongs in this draft, the first nibble draft, I mean, the, the discussion started with the first nibble draft. You could say, you know, the, you know, the discussion and the capturing of the discussion may belong in a framework draft. Um, may belong in the requirements draft, saying, you know, there's a requirement that the M&A header should tell you whether there's PSD. There's a requirement that, because when you finish the label stack, how do you know what comes next? And you can't guess based on anything because Ethernet can have anything, whatever, in the first nibble, the first word. So, you know, you could say it was control plane signaling. There's an IPVPN. Uh, you know, it's or you know, or maybe there's no signaling, and you assume it's IP. I think that's. I don't want to put a protocol header there. Uh, I don't want to tell you what the payload is, but I do think that we need to have a discussion about telling you whether there is PSD and what, how to interpret it. Okay. Okay. I'll keep this, uh, um, you know, I, uh, open for now, and we'll we'll uh, consider this draft. Uh, still has open item, uh, open issues. Okay. So, okay. And uh, with this, uh, in, if no one else have, wants to comment on the action items, I can save and uh, go back to the agenda. Uh, Loa, feel free to add if you want. Uh, and add anything or man, elaborate on something? Uh, no, I'm pretty happy, but I'm still 
a bit curious where the discussion on the first nibble will go, and I'm not sure yet. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see where was the agenda. I think I lost. Yeah. So ne next item on our agenda is Jimmy on this draft, uh, M&A incaps. I'm happy to pass you the ball so you can share the screen. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Let me try to share my screen. Can you see my slides now? Hello? I can see them. Yeah, I can see them. Okay, good. Let me wait a moment. Oh, maybe I need to. Okay, now it's okay. Okay, here's a presentation about the draft on the encapsulation of the MPRS network actions and the associated data. So we submit this draft just before, just at the beginning of the ITF 114 meeting. So we ask for the presentation after the meeting in the design team meeting. Okay, here's some brief introduction. So basically this document specifies a general solution for carrying the MLA information either in the label stack as the ISD or after the label stack, which is called uh, as PSD. Okay, the purpose of this document is to align with the MPRS architecture and the MPRS encoding and also the MLA requirements as de described in the MLA requirement draft. Uh, this document is focusing on the encapsulation of the uh, MLA information, but the specification of the uh, specific type of interaction and the, the data is out of the scope of this document. So here we just uh, want to show the design principles of this document. Firstly, we use a new BSPL as the indicator of the existence of the MLA information. And where the MLA information is carried in the packet will be indicated with the flags. And with this, uh, we allow a different combination of this uh, MLA data in the packet, such as we can use only the ISD, or we can use only the PSD or the combination of the ISD and the PSD. The third point is uh, we would like to minimize and simplify the MLA information carried as ISD in the MPS label stack. This is based on the uh, discussion in the uh, working group consensus call, which means that uh, uh, seems that people have concerns about the usage of the ISD and want to minimize it. So when ISD is needed, uh, the ISD design with a fixed lens is recommended. And we will also try to reduce the impact of the ISD to the label stack encoding and the processing. Uh, for the MA information, which need to carry a large or variable lens of data, or need to have the flexible structure, uh, it is suggested to uh, encode this information as a PSD. Okay, here shows the indic MLA indicator format. It is like a label stack entry with a new BSPL. Uh, this new BSPL is used to, to indicate the existence of the MLA information. And the TTL and the TC fields are reused as a flags. Here we defined uh, several flags, including the H flag for the hop by hop processing and I flag is to indicate uh, the next label entry is used to carry the MLA information as ISD. And the P flag is to indicate uh, there's a post stack data following the MPS label stack. Uh, 
uh, we also use two flags and uh, uh, TTL field uh, as the instack data format indicate. Uh, so when the I flag is set, this field is used to indicate the format of the instack MNA data uh, information in the following label stack. For the ISD encapsulation, we, uh, this document allows different options based on the value of the ISF field. Uh, when the ISF field is, the value is uh, 0, 1, uh, the uh, a four octet label stack entry is used to carry a series of the action flags which do, does, which do not need uh, uh, associated data. So this is uh, like we can maybe use uh, 20 maybe or maybe 19 bits as the flags for the actions. Uh, when the ISF value is uh, one zero, uh, which means we use a four octet label stack entry to carry a reference forwarding value, which is a, like a label value and can be used to indicate the forwarding actions uh, based on the uh, local policy configured on the network nodes. And for the ISF value one one, it is reserved for future extensions. Here we it didn't change the TC and the TTL fields for now. Uh, so the value of the TTL field should be set to zero to ensure that it is not used uh, inadvertently for forwarding. But uh, this may be used uh, extended uh, in the future uh, based on the discussion. For the PSD encapsulation, as I just mentioned, it is used to carry the actions with associated data. Uh, and it supports a flexible and structured data format. The length of the data can be variable. Uh, for this uh, encoding, uh, this PSD encapsulation will be based on the NPR's extension header draft uh, like, uh, was pre presented in the meeting. So we, I think we converge on the PSD encapsulation. So here are the conclusions. We think this document provides a comprehensive solution for the MNA information encapsulation. The design principle aligns with the uh, MNA requirements. We also take the existing NPR's architecture and the encoding into the consideration. Uh, last the point, but not most, uh, not uh, but also important is uh, we sim try to simplify the ISD encapsulation and also leave rooms for the future extension. Uh, okay, we welcome comments, uh, feedbacks, and uh, collaboration. Thanks. Okay, thank you. And we have we have question, a question um, from Tony. Go ahead. Um, could you go back to the slide showing the RFV? Which page? Next, next slide. Slide five. This one. Yeah. Okay. So, is there some reason why this couldn't be carried in stack as in stack data? Uh, you mean for the format, uh, the second format? Yes. Yeah. If we use, uh, because the, the lens is fixed, uh, if we use it to carry a data, that means that uh, oh, very limited kind of data can be carried with this uh, fixed lens. But if we use like a, a, this, a, a reference forwarding value, it can represent a set of uh, natural actions and uh, the associated information that is based on the local policy configuration. So that is more flexible and it's not, it does not limit it to a, well, a very limited number of the action data carried in the packet. For the data which we really need to carry in the packet, the length usually will be larger than this and we recommend to put them to the PSD. Okay. Okay, I have a question on the same thing, on the same slide at least. Um, so this uh, RFV, um, is it a replacement for user defined? So the local, you know, the actions are 
local policy. Like, do you mean that local policy, the user has defined the policy? Yeah, I think that may be related to the user defined, but may not limit to the user defined. It can also be used for maybe a set of uh, uh, standard actions, but uh, just uh, represented them as a, a reference value, not to, instead of carrying this explicit action data in the packet. How like ensure that it's uniform, um, you know, at least, you know, the meaning of an action is the same consistent on multiple nodes. Yeah, that is, uh, maybe that depends on the uh, control plane or management plane uh, mechanism to assure that the different nodes are provisioned consistently with this, uh, the actions. Okay, thank you. Um, going back to the queue, we have Stuart also. So, a quick question. Given that we've already crossed the Rubicon by using TC and TTL in the indicator that's immediately before this, um, shouldn't you be making them available for other use here? Yeah, uh, I think that is possible. I just uh, uh, here, I just follow the uh, through defining the EL entropy label draft, it also uh, says that the TTL of the entropy label should be set to zero. That is, uh, but maybe if we can make sure that this label will not be lived as a top label, that is okay well, to it, maybe reuse it. Maybe I don't understand it then. Isn't this going? Isn't this following the label you defined earlier in your um, draft? Yeah. Yes. But, right, uh, so you've, you've already crossed that uh, line where TTL is no longer a TTL. Yeah, that is because that is a special label, right? You can recognize that label as, as and you can know that uh, the, uh, the format and semantics of the TTL or TC field are changed. But if uh, some node uh, ignores that the special label, but the parse the next label, which they may treat it as a normal forwarding label and the TTL field. Well, no, hang on. I, I, I think if you ignore the previous label, then all bets are off because this is just a random bag of bits. You see that that in stack action flags is not a real label. So if ever you treated it as a real label in your label table, uh, it's completely undefined what would happen. So I, th I think we're in a position and I think maybe we should be sort of considering this as a, as a proper formal structure, that you've got um, a couple of labels. I, I'm sure I had a better word for that. But you have a pair of labels that have a combined meaning. We already have that concept elsewhere in MPLS. So given that this label has no semantics at all, except in the context of the previous of its predecessor, then um, I don't think you're bound by the semantics of TC and TTL. Yeah, I agree. Uh, personally, I think it is uh, possible to reuse the TC and TTL for other meaning, but uh, just uh, here we need, in the beginning, we try to be conservative and uh, to align with the uh, existing description about the TTL field in the like, entropy label. But uh, we can discuss whether, like you said, we can treat this uh, the indicator and this label as a uh, a group so that we can redefine right. it uh, right. safely. Yeah, Thank you. Good suggestion. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Rakesh is in the queue. Uh, hi, G hi, Jimmy. Um, I have uh, one observation. Um, so, in, if you're using um, opcode. Uh, based encoding, then would it be uh, not possible to define an opcode, let's say eight or something, and say it's querying 20 bits of RF, RFV um, instead of data, uh, different data? Would that work? Oh, you mean to where you put the opcode field in the table stack? 
in yes, the indicator? Yes, it's defined or... in, uh, there is a draft or need to carry the opcodes, um, like uh, flex and opcodes based encoding, uh, there is a draft for it. Um, and I'm just thinking that um, in opcode based encoding, if you say um, uh, some opcode 8, let's say, and that 20 bit that carried uh, as a um, data ISD with it is the RFV, then uh, it's a bit more, um, then you can define multiple of opcodes, and if a node doesn't support opcode, it can skip it. Um, I'm just thinking, uh, would that not work? Mm, yeah. Uh, I think here we just want to show that uh, uh, the after the indicator, we suggest to use a fixed length label stack entry to carry some uh, action flags or like a, a reference uh, value or identifier for the forwarding behavior. Uh, with the opcode mechanism, do you mean that you can you want to add a, a list of uh, the opcodes in the label stack, or you want, just want to use one opcode with a, a label like this RFV here? Yeah, it it be fixed, right? So if you're doing Apple to Apple comparison, then you would just have one up opcode and then RFV associates its fixed um, format from that point of view. Yeah. Maybe that is uh, uh, another optional encoding for yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Kiriti, um, you're next. Um, so I want to um, reiterate what you just said that, um, that Tarek, that the RFV to me smells exactly like user defined data. Um, and actually uh, has similar problems um, because when we talk, talked about user defined data uh, internally, we were asking how do we make sure that everyone has the same meaning of this? Um, uh, you know, and again, we, we decided that it's done by uh, the management plane, making sure that everyone's policies, everyone uh, treats that uh, user defined ISD the same way. The other thing I want to reiterate what Stuart said, because when I wrote the um, entropy label draft, we were treating uh, TC TTL as sacrosanct, uh, especially for the for the ELI, the entropy label indicator, because that's the first label that potentially could come to the top of stack and um, you know be treated as a regular forwarding label or or even as a um, uh, as a special purpose label, which you at that point may not understand. Um, I think if I have one uh, good contribution to this group, it's that um, it's a suggestion that we can reuse TC and TTL for any label that's not at the top of stack. So once you do that, uh, as uh, Stuart put it, you're across the Rubicon and Things that are below this in the label stack, nobody looks at TCTTL there. Um, and so, yeah, it's just you're wasting bits, but if that's what you want to do, great. Um, but, you know, I think those bits are open to, to use. The last thing I want to say is that um, at some level, what's happening in this draft is you're juggling the bits around and you're moving meanings around. Uh, but, you know, this is fundamentally not that different from the original FAI draft. Uh, I think one big thing that we did in the FAI draft after discussion with the folks in Broadcom. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, for this draft, uh, the Thank design you. is to, yeah, thanks. Sorry? Can you hear me? Uh, no. I haven't finished, but but yeah. Oh, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So um, I think it's important to to uh, to what Stuart was saying. It's not just two associated labels. Um, it's a block of labels that are sort of associated. Once you have something that says uh, here's an MNA indicator, everything that follows it, as many as they may be, 
uh, that that set of labels is a block that needs to be treated as one unit. And the length field up front lets you say, I don't understand any of this, but at least I understand that this is an MNA indicator and I know what the length is, so I can throw away the block as a whole. So I think that that's an important part of this. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I understand that you mean that uh, you want to allow more label stack entries to be considered as a, a group of the MA information, right? Uh, I think that is one possible approach. Uh, well, here we try to simplify the as the encapsulation and to limit it its size length so that we can uh, reduce the impact to the label stack encoding and the log also the overhead we in introduce to the label stack uh, because uh, uh, as we discussed before this uh, m a information if we put it in as ISD, it may repeat it several it repeat several times. If we make it the lens uh, variable and maybe, uh, maybe that will also increase the the, the stack uh, the, the depth of the label stack and so will cause other issues to the uh, nodes to parse and to process it. So that is a uh, uh, so so one. If you're going to put ISD in the stack, the value of that ISD is that it's near the top of stack and people can process it where they can't necessarily process it if it's at the bottom of stack. So if you want to put something like a network slicing indicator, a network slicing identifier, um, and you put that at the bottom of stack, it's really going to be ignored by many, many routers in the past. If you don't have data with your ISD, uh, I see limited value in what you're doing. Mm. And that is um, one. Okay, sorry, I, I thought uh, you were done and Loa is still in the queue. Um, so feel free, I'm not sure if you want to continue on that. Uh, I just have a, that's much water under the bridges now, but I think that I agree with that what Stuart said about that it's actually possible to use the TC field and the TTL for indicators if we want that. And then can you go to the slide that says M and A indicator? Uh okay. the headline headline. This one? Yeah. Uh, I would actually since it's a special purpose label. I would like to call it M and A label because all the others, with the exception of uh, the uh, entry label indicator, are actually called yes, called labels. And that was this. Those twenty bits are the label, and they are special purpose labels. So M and A label. Okay, you mean the terminology here? Yeah, it's yeah. I think you will have a, um, if you start to call it indicator, uh, people will start to talk about it as that identifier, and then we are kind of all over the, the place. It's better to just limit the name to, to label, because that was this. Mm, yeah, this is a good suggestion. Mm -hmm. My original understanding uh, about this is uh, the label plus this flags I used as an indicator of the MNA information and their position oh, but, in the package. That's, that's not what the figure says. If you change okay. uh, MNA indicator in the figure to the uh, to MNA label equal SPL to be assigned, and then the the flags, then. I'm fine. We call all 30, whatever it is, 31 bits for uh, m and indicator. That's fine. Basically, but, 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 the, but the 20, 20 bits should be uh, m and label. Um, okay. 
someone talk about it. Oh, sorry, uh, it was my mistake. Um, I, 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 Loa, you're still on the queue. Do you want to? Uh, no, you can take me down or I can do it. Okay. Um, um, the next is Stuart. Um, just a, a side note from this, that, uh, and I, I can't remember who I had the discussion with, but we probably should formalize within the MPLS architecture this concept of groups of label or whatever we want to call them as being um, a legitimate entity, and then we can talk about it as an architectural construct. It doesn't need to stop anything else, uh, you know, or get in the way of anything, but we should probably formally um, um, document it so we don't have pushback that it's not an MPLS concept. Can we can we start that draft? I, I I'm willing to help you if you want. But, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't remember yeah. who I had the conversation with. I think it was you and me and maybe Matthew. Right. Well, anyway, I think we should write a short draft formalizing this mm -hmm. concept so that people don't push back and say this is not MPLS. Okay. You should join that. Right. Yeah. On his back. So the uh, framework draft uses the concept of a substack for exactly that purpose. Mm. Yeah, but Tony, that, that that doesn't really sort of leak out properly into general MPLS, though, does it? I'm not arguing that you shouldn't use something more general. I'm just saying the concept is already there, and you're. You, I think you should adopt the terminology. Okay, now I'm fine with adopting the same terminology as you've already uh, used, but it needs to be something that covers um, the existing stuff, um, of which there are several instances as well. So, yeah, all right. We, well, I, I, I'm, I'm not religious about any tech terminology. Uh, I just think we need to sort of formalize this as a concept. Include me in. That, that was Kariti, wasn't it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would be happy to also participate in this discussion. Okay. No, are you still raising your hand? Uh, yeah, no, again. Uh, I have one question that is not particularly on this document, but we have used H for hope by hope. Do we have and I, oh, I think I asked this before, but do we have the concept of telling one particular node down an LSP that yes, this particular node need to take action on this? It's not hope by hope, it's just one hope that we actually point at. Uh, is that should that be part of what we're doing? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so we've had this discussion before, and so we have sort of two extremes. One is hop by hop, so everyone pro pro uh, parses this, uh, processes it, and the other is end to end, where only the egress parses it. And the things in between where one particular node or a subset of the nodes on the path uh, parse it, it's, it's hard to encode that in any easy way. Um, so generally you end up having to uh, spend quite a bit of time um, doing that. Um, as an analogy, again, it's not a perfect analogy. In fact, it might be an analogy that people don't like. IPv6 has hop by hop and end to end or destination you know, uh, options. So uh, it's worth considering, but it's also worth thinking about how to encode that efficiently. And um, right now I'm in a position where, you know, I would say do it hop by hop and have the nodes that need to process it uh, understand that this is for them, but trying to encode specifically which nodes those are, um, I, I don't have a good way to do that, which doesn't mean that, that it doesn't exist, but uh, it, I, I think that's something that needs to be solved. Oh. 
Uh, I raise my hand. Uh, can I give some comments here? Please, uh, actually, Rakesh is ahead of you. For okay. You. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can wait. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, so, Loa, just to answer your question, um, that kind of um, uh, functionality would be possible when using the opcode based encoding. Uh, because the nodes that support or enable with the opcode will process it and the one that's not will just keep and go to the next opcode based on this because there is a length there as well. So it is possible, um, at least um, that's what I'm thinking with uh, using opcode based encoding. I don't see it, but okay. Sorry, um, you mean to say not possible? Everyone has been upgraded. Everyone understands all opcodes. How do you say I only want that fifth node in the path to to process this? It's unless you have a huge space of opcodes where you say I only want the fifth node to understand this opcode. How does that work? You enable it, right? So you you go to the node and you enable. Let's say if it's using opcode five. And you want uh, node X to process it, you only enable on that. So other node will not have it enabled, so they will skip it. Uh, I guess uh, Kriti means that if uh, maybe for uh, one packet you want to designate the, this node to, to process it, but for another packet you want to designate this node to ignore this same opcode. But it will not uh, cannot be done by enable or disable this opcode on this node. It depends on the information carrying the packet. Exactly. Okay. Why you? You're next. Uh, a possible solution is actually uh, laid out in one of our companion document for the extension header, uh, which is to decouple the potential extension header pass uh, and the uh, label switching pass, uh, which means these two paths um, may not necessarily uh, overlap. Um, in, on, on the single label switching pass, we could define uh, multiple um, extension header pass or uh, consecutively uh, uh, extension header pass. So, so if on each extension header pass is a defined scope of the uh, extension headers. Uh, we can certainly, uh, I've already uh, said in the uh, ATF presentation, we can certainly extend such concept to actually to apply to the entire IMNA, uh, which means, uh, yeah, uh, if we define the scope of the, uh, this IMNA uh, pass, uh, just be a sub, uh, sub pass of the uh, entire label switching pass, then uh, then we can easily support, okay, where if, if it's an end-to-end -end type again, then we can easily uh, specify the last node actually uh, who should uh, uh, support this action. So in, in this way, we can uh, solve this problem. Uh, certainly, um, we, this uh, also need the... Uh, Okay, so so it's also uh, needs some control plane help actually to specify the uh, MLA pass. Yeah, that's my comments. You you're done. Ah uh, yeah, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Uh, Loa, you're next in the queue. Yeah, okay. So I think uh, one reason for me to bring this up was that uh, I'm kind of close to where Kiriati is. I think we should say that this is currently not in scope and maybe for further study, but we should actually document it so it's in our documents because today uh, I get uh, this type of question uh, from more than one, one person. So. Uh, document the scope that is uh, doing what you classified as end-to-end uh, -end and half by half, and only those two for for the time being. 
Thanks. Okay, uh, Tony, you're left in the queue. Thank you. Um, so I'll point out that the framework document uh, considers this to be what's called select scope and allows you to specify which nodes should address the network actions. And uh, we all already do have an existing solution elsewhere uh, for dealing with how to specify what the scope of select is. Uh, the beer folks have actually solved this for us, and it is simply a bit catalog of the nodes in the network. Um, solving this is not impossible. It's somewhat expensive because the, the bit catalog is non-trivial and is linear in the size of the network. Uh, but you could conceivably carry this as in-stack or post-stack data. Um, while I have the floor, I should also just simply point out that carrying beer around for multicast purposes is a possible network action. Um, no other uh, questions in the queue. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. I will stop sharing. Okay. Uh, just to revisit my agenda. Um, we had one item. I think we can. We have fifteen minutes. Um, the third item that on the agenda was that um, report from the solutions internet drafts, uh, the multiple solutions uh, the, out there and uh, um, any possible alignment. I, I'm not sure how do we want to approach this. Uh, let me just put out the question. Uh, was there any progress that anyone wants to report to the design team? Feel free to raise your hand or take the mic. I think that's an answer, isn't it? I'm afraid it is, but I'm hoping it's not. It, um, I, I'm curious because today we presented one other solution from Jimmy and um, I'm going to ask the question to Jimmy is the plan to reach out to the other solutions out there and see how you can complement them or you you think that uh, it's not possible so the question is to Jimmy I guess I'm asking yeah, I think uh, this document, uh, as I mentioned, it uh, is a general solution. We gives it, uh, some options of the ISD format, and it also leaves room for the other uh, types of format. So it is uh, possible to uh, maybe collaborate with uh, the document to like uh, build a complete solution for both ISD and PSD. Okay, thank you. We don't have any other um, willing to report. Um, any 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 incentives we want to throw out um, before we close for today? Um, Loa and others, Stewart. Well, I guess the chairs should probably have a discussion about how they want to um, uh, move forward with the competing solutions and, and may have to drive the process of amalgamation. Yes, we have a Tuesday meeting coming up. I think this we can put on the agenda for the chairs. That's right. That's right. Yeah.
Okay, I don't have anything else um, for today. Um, and if no one else has anything else, I can stop the recording and give you back a couple of minutes the remaining time. Yeah, do that. Okay. Okay, thank you as usual for coming in and uh, uh, I'll stop the recording now.